All right, yo, 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 what is going on is another edition of the Bush League Mud Show Slade. PJ, we are coming at you uh, for your Raw in AEW Dynamite review. <laughs> Raw was, eh, Dynamite straight ass, I thought. Bizarro world. The, cho- the I mean, the show is flip-flop kind of momentum this week where Raw was up a little bit and Dynamite, yeah. uh, after that first couple segments, I don't know what the hell that was. To me, there's really not much that you can tell me to prove me wrong or get me to see a different perspective in light because I just thought not that it was any much better, but I thought Raw was a better show than Dynamite this week. For this Dynamite, week, yeah, it was I all over was. the place. It was like dog shit. Yeah. Uh, first off, want you to uh, definitely check us out wherever you can listen to all of your favorite podcasts and YouTube page. Like and subscribe and social media, Bush League, MS Pod. Like, we'll follow back. Uh, big story, at least since that Dynamite episode from Wednesday night. Uh, this is something that was carrying over from a few days prior with a WWE live event, and that is the news that has uh, apparently became official yep. that WWE has officially released Jeff Hardy from his contract. This is according to Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful.com. This release reportedly came after Hardy was offered a chance to go once again into rehab. He rejected the company's offer. Now, this was... After some strange behavior during a WWE live event in mm-hmm. Texas over this past weekend, it was a tag match with he and Drew McIntyre and King Woods going against the bloodline of Reigns and the Usos, and he just very strangely disappeared, went off into the crowd, yeah. didn't return for the post-match uh, celebration which with the baby faces, yeah. and so he got pulled from the road and did not appear on the Sunday night live event and that's you know the company decided to offer and he declined and this is this is such a sad story because um you know one of the things i was looking forward to with this past WWE draft was him coming over the smackdown as a baby face that could we could give this guy he's always wanted one big last good run with the company yeah doesn't necessarily mean be the world champ no. but at least a good yeah run and Roman Reigns was going to need baby faces to run through mm-hmm. until we can get to Mania to face Brock or whoever it's going to be. Yeah. And he was just on the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast yeah. and telling some stories and talking about those demons that he's overcome and that he's continued to battle over the years. They have constantly thrown out storylines over the years of this man's career in the company that yeah, well, pokes at his addiction. Well, last notably, summer they did it. With the Seamus thing. Yeah. So you're thinking like like this is, you know, Jeff is what, about 44 now, 43, yeah. 44, 45, mm-hmm. mid-40s. And now this story comes out, and I don't know, maybe I'm saying too much, maybe I'm taking some words out of your mouth, but when you found out this news – uh, your your thoughts on Jeff Hardy being the the most recently released by the company? Not surprised, I guess, since yeah. if he did reject the offer, and that's the thing they wanted to do is get him help, and they've always paid for him, and they helped yeah. him the last time we go around, and Jeff has talked about that. And he is a guy that you would say in a roundabout way in terms of talent on the roster, a high risk, right? Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, It's always yeah. been the stories that it, there are yep. people that – Although they knew that he could be a top guy, they couldn't trust no. him. No, and and I don't. I I know Eric Bischoff tells the story of what actually happened at TNA. TNA Impact the match the, with he and Sting. He he talked about that. You know, he didn't really see Jeff a whole lot until it was about time, and then he obviously knew uh, this is not not good. So I mean. It could have been the same kind of deal where no one saw Jeff for a while or, or, you know, backstage. And I don't want to make anything up, but I just, unfortunately, you see the pattern here that's happened. And that's the deal with alcoholism, unfortunately, is with those demons and and things like that, you never know. And, and I don't know what support group he had with him at the time or not, or if if he was just feeling a low and he couldn't connect with any of, of his support group right then and there. And that's unfortunately the downfall but i i see some fans and some say well well, now we're done with this company forever for releasing him it's like you weren't done with all the other people that you, the company i mean the for the aw diehards to say well that this is just un, this was uncharacter they can't do that to this guy now well they 
they've thrown out the lifeline uh, plenty of times. Who knows how many? But you know, they they say you know we you got to get help. You, you know, you got to continue the path. You know, we'll pay for it. You'll go, and we want you. I mean, that tells you though they wanted to keep him on. If you don't want to keep somebody like that on, you just release them right away. Yeah, I mean, they, they sent him home. Think about it. Let's tackle it later. But I, to some of the fans out there, they're saying, well, this is, you know, crass of WWE to do this. No, no hard at all. It, it's not, it's a tough situation for everyone involved. And I tell you, probably with their plans too, they, they did not want to do this. He had to be up next for Reigns. To you know, carry him through. So you're absolutely right. This changes storylines. They got to scramble. So unfortunate news. Well, now they got to actually, you know, find something for Drew McIntyre. Now that it too. Like this was going to be something they were going to form. Whether we would have gotten a one on one between these two, or maybe a tag team makeshift until we could figure out plans for those two. Because these are two guys that, for right now, are kind of were lost in the shuffle a little bit on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. But they still have something about them to offer. Well, nonetheless, regardless of you know the scenario that we are now faced with, Jeff Hardy and WWE, all you can do is hope for the best for Jeff. Yes. Uh, I yeah. hate to say, but this is the, the kind of like the same thing you're always hoping for over the years with Jeff Hardy. So mm-hmm. hopefully, this is no different where he can get on his feet and. You know, whether that be continuing in the wrestling business, whether that be joining his brother in AEW or going to Impact, wherever, or just chilling. Maybe just chilling is the best thing. You know, know. Wish, I mean, wish Jeff Hardy yeah. the best. WWE Raw, this show, well, they opened it immediately with a, well, first off, we, you know, they really tried to hype you up because they were going to go straight into a cage match. Mm-hmm. Now, we just came out of some cage matches with this company. Yes. So we decided, well, what the hell? Let's just throw one on for Monday night on Raw. Me as well. Even though our true, true, true diehards had just seen some at War Games. But how many weekend. true, true diehards are still hanging on to that product? Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the, the other, other thing. Uh, they ran some vignette packages to start off the show between both Big E and Kevin Owens, who were going to be the two participants in the steel cage match. They got right into it, and immediately Owens tried to escape. Yeah, Big why not? E, yeah, Big E was able to to counter, and you know, two big guys. I'll I'll tell you, two big athletic guys like Big E and Kevin Owens, uh, knowing what they're capable of athletically and what they're willing to try, especially mm-hmm. Kevin Owens. There are certain parts of this match that I knew. My butthole was gonna pucker a little bit, yes, just because you got two, three hundred yeah. pound men going at it in the cage. Yeah, when they when, crazy when you shit. had Biggie like tippy toeing on the top rope, even though it was the corner, and you have a little you know guidance with the cage there. Still, like you said, two big guys up there, just you know going around trying to just keep their balance, and then they're gonna do a big power move. Yeah, I mean they they had us on edge, and back to the intros too. Kind of felt like a mania feel where they they had the uh, promos of the guys. I'm sure they were scripted, but you know yeah. they they had them right there in the face, and it was it was all right. And a rip off of what SmackDown had been doing on and off yes. for the last six months too, right? Yes. In terms of before we we really yes. officially start SmackDown, we're going to give you little vignette yeah. pieces of superstars in the back. Given but that it was better than the, the canned shit coming out to the ring for 15 minutes and nothing gets accomplished. And we've been getting straight to the action yes. lately, I feel like, the last couple of weeks with this show. I think there's been direct, well, not so much on the Fox side. They want the star out there to talk a little bit. But I think yeah. on the Raw side, there may have been a directive from USA, get the action going right away. Yeah. They end up taking a, a commercial break, these two. They were going at it. Uh, back and forth, Big E, before the break had hit, Kevin Owens with a spear, sent them into the side of the cage, and then he ended up missing a spear, attempting another one. Um, he, he speared the side of the cage anyways. Came back from the break, Owens had um, some advantage of this match. Now, this mm-hmm. is all going on as Seth Rollins is on the outside <laughs> awaiting yes. which one am I going to attack yeah. as soon as this – maybe I'll just attack them both, whatever. Mm-hmm. This is now a triple threat match, which another thing. You want me to get hyped up for a triple threat match over the world title, but you're giving me a cage match between two out of, of the, the three participants. Yeah. yeah, I didn't. Uh, I didn't necessarily 
uh, understand that. But anyway. remember, they want you to forget about that in three weeks. Here, you will not forget. It's a new year. You will. You would have forgot that. That's old. That's twenty twenty one. Yeah, that's what they're they're open for. We had Big E stomping Kevin Owens from uh, stopping him from climbing out of the top of the cage. Owens was able to hit a frog splash off of the top yes. for a two count. Yeah, before um, uh, Big E was able to counter and hit a spear. Then Owens hit a pop up power bomb for another two count, yep. which, again, a cage match for me. I need to see someone escape. I don't need a three count mm-hmm. in the middle of the ring. Otherwise, there's really no point to having this structure. But, anyways, uh, Big E was able to knock Kevin Owens off the top before crawling out of the ring for the win. So you got Big E defeating Kevin Owens via. Um, uh, pinfall here. Yeah. Uh, after the match, Rollins, he, he took his liberties. He immediately started taking Big E from behind, laid him out. Then he started attacking Owens in the ring before Big E was able to save Owens from a curb stop. Yep. But not out of the generosity of his heart. No. He gave Owens some of the smoke as well. He hit him with a big ending, and then they go to commercial. And then yes. I'm thinking to myself, why the fuck are we going to commercial? Will we come back from commercial? Why is everyone laying down? <laughs> right. <laughs> Everyone's laying down at ringside. We see that Bobby Lashley apparently during the commercial break came and took out everybody. Yeah. I mean, I you got to, I guess, put him back in that picture maybe. I, I don't know because you know, the Owens contract thing, it does sound definite. January, he's done at the end of January. we so, got to give you so the next program from yes. Big E, which so, Lashley never got his rematch. Yes, he didn't. So apparently, you know, he's got to do some damage here, get his name in that picture once again. And it's going to come at the expense of Kevin Owens, who's obviously going to eat the pin at this pay-per-view. But I guess it was a surprise. It was a, it was something fresh because usually you see it and they hit it from us. And then they say, oh, you missed everything during the break. So I'll, I'll give him some kudos there that it, it was something new. Um, we got an announcement that there was going to be a Raw Tag Team Championship number one contender tournament. That ended up being renamed during the show, the RK Bronament by uh, by Matt Riddle or Riddle. Sorry, we ended up getting a match of Queen Zelina Vega with Carmella versus Nikki Ash. It was with Rhea Ripley. This match here, um, well, let me just give you the ending immediately. Mm. Zelina hit the code red for the pin and the win. And um, we we had the way that they were shooting this and shooting Rhea Ripley's face started to kind of tell you the story that maybe Rhea is starting to get a little sick and tired of being associated with Nikki Ash. Hopefully. We all are. <laughs> I just, it's getting to that point. Yeah. Uh, backstage, we got RK Bro. They're being interviewed about the number one contender tournament that, as I mentioned before, has now been renamed the RK bro And this was, you know, you got me on the bandwagon, all right? These two mm-hmm. are some of the better joys of this show to watch yes yeah. their interaction is very entertaining uh more so riddle than yes. orton i think orton yeah. is just there to play off of it yep and this is all over a sport jacket that riddle wanted orton yes. to wear and finally after begging and pleading and begging and pleading and getting the crowd to basically join in on the entire shtick orton decided to go ahead and put it on and went out to the ring yes uh, I they, mean, it was classic raw with the blazers out and everything called in the action. I mean, that's Orton had the cooler one. His had the yes, hood attached to it. Yes, he did. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so they go down the ringside. They're sitting ringside. They're joining commentary as we get this thing popping off a first round match of the Street Profits versus Jay Styles and Omos. We got AJ and Angelo starting to match off uh, before AJ and Angelo uh, or AJ send Angelo out of the ring and. Uh, Knocks Montez off the apron. We end up going to an immediate break because why not with this damn yeah. show, right? I yeah. mean, we go to break anytime we come. Uh, anyways, we come back from the break. We got Omos who enters the ring, and he does what Omos does. He manhandles the competition, and Angelo is the bump guy on this team. Yes, he is. You know, he is. So uh, we got some back and forth. Um, 
We fast forward, we get AJ Styles sending Angelo out of the ring. He hit Montez with some, some kicks and a suplex before Angelo was able to pull AJ off the top. Omos took him out at ringside, and then Omos was able to, uh, well, he was unable to get back into the ring in time. Mm-hmm. He gets counted out for the win, so you got the Street Profits who win via a count out there. So they advance in the tournament. And distinct, you know, this teasing of the split between uh... – AJ and Omos continues. Riddle with a great spot at the end of the match to try to get the the old sideline reporter gig. What's going on between you two? I mean, that that was pretty good at the end. Yeah, he gets into the ring. He's asking questions, and AJ is abiding for a little bit. And then yes. finally he comes back to his senses and says, well, wait, wait, wait a second. We don't like you. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so AJ walks off. Um, we go backstage. We get an interview. Becky Lynch who is going to be defending the title that very night against Liv Morgan. Mm-hmm. The way that we've presented yes. this to the public, you would think this is going to go down at the next pay-per-view. No, no. no. This is a little AEW booking for this Raw. We're just going to hot shot it. Got a thrown-together match here. These guys cannot win as a tag team, so they figure, well, let's try to luck again yeah. as a solo uh, with Robert Roode, who came down to the ring with Dolph Ziggler. This is a U.S title match against Damian Priest and uh, this match it starts off and we've got Rude and Ziggler taking liberties and getting the upper hand on Priest early in the match and then we got a commercial break. Uh, (laughs) We come back from the break. Priest he's finally making a comeback. He hits a broken arrow for a two count Yeah. uh, before clapping Bobby Rude's ears. Uh, Rude was able to hit a backstabber for a two count. Yes. And then Damian Priest was able to rock Rude again with some strikes. And then uh, Rude hit the, his patented spine buster for a two count. Mm-hmm. Why so many two counts? We already know who's going to win. Yes. We shouldn't have so many two counts. Champions, in my mind, shouldn't be taken to the brink by every Not challenger. Everyone. Maybe it's a favor for Rude and Ziggler to make them look... Somewhat, I mean, because the moves they do on tag team, they're they're unbelievable. If this was twenty years ago, they would be tag team champions. It, it, it just would be. They're a great team together. But maybe it's something to help root out. I don't know. Yeah, uh, Priest eventually was able to hit the glorious um, counter. The glorious DDT hit the reckoning for the pin and the win. So there you go, Damian Priest continuing his reign as the United States champ. Bianca Belair, she came out to the ring before she got immediately attacked from behind by Dewdrop, and then we went to a commercial, and then we came back, and this is the match that we got. The match Bianca. should have just stayed in commercial because the, the, the ending was just bullshit, and it's like, okay. Yeah, we got another two countouts. Yes. In one night. Yeah. We already had one the tag team yeah. match. We got one here, Bianca Belair defeating Dewdrop via a countout. Yeah, and so, Dewdrop was picking stuff out of Bianca's hair, and then she said, oh, I'm, I'm done with that, and she just walked to the back. We it's had like, Dewdrop hit a Vader bomb at one yes. point in this match. Yeah, I know. I saw that, and I'm For like, a okay, two count. Two count, and then, yeah, then it was the picking the stuff out of the hair, and then I'm done. I'm walking out. And it's like, after, well, after Bianca tried to do the move, you know, the – the kiss that on on the elbow. I mean, she did a good job lifting her up, and then she just walked out, and that was how we ended. It was like, oh, okay. After this match, we go to a backstage segment for the – this is now the third week in a row of Mr. McMahon. Yes. In the office with Austin Theory. Mm-hmm. Second week in a row for Theory being events. Yes. Third week in a row in general with – well, no, no, I guess this was uh, – Second, yeah, yes. yeah, second week second in a row. Second week in a I'm row. I'm sorry, I feel like Vince has been on TV too much already. He, he has been. Um, I hope there's a good payoff with this because right now it is so goddamn clueless. You well, don't it's know. starting to get bland already. Yeah, you don't know what is if he going to be. If this doesn't end in theory, yes. yeah. I mean, is McMahon going to be his, uh, you know, the, is he going to be not comforting him down the ring, but is he his new authority type? chosen figure or what is that what we're going with with this or not so far there's no seeds of anything so i don't know what we're doing after that we went to a commercial we come back go straight to the ring we got an edition of ms tv with of course special guest edge (laughs) they go back and forth and then the two stand up they face off before edge then challenges ms to a match at day one 
and which Miz ended up denying before Edge basically hit Miz and Miz fell backwards. Or at least he pretended that he was going to hit Miz and yeah. Miz, like a chicken shit, ended up dropping down to the to the mat and Edge had no choice but to laugh and walk off. We go backstage, Liv Morgan. She's interviewed ahead of her match against Becky Lynch and we got some gibberish and on we go to the next match, back to the number one contenders tournament for the tag team titles. We got the Mysterios versus Alpha Academy. This was a match that, uh, well, Dom and Chad, they start the match off with Chad basically getting Dominic uh, away from his father until Dominic was able to pin Chad out of nowhere after a dragon screw. Mm-hmm. And then Chad landed on his feet, missed a moonsault. And um, yeah, so um, this was a. Short match for the most part. Yeah. Mysterio's defeating Alpha Academy. So now we know how they feel about Gable and they got nothing. Otis, there's nothing. There's no direction for him. There's nothing, unfortunately, because yeah, you like you said, you had last year's Money in the Bank winner, and then you had a good gimmick with Gable here, and they just they they have no direction for him, unfortunately. Yeah. Well, they got a little bit of a parting gift, I guess you could say, after the match. Riddle gets back into the ring for another interview (laughs) with the losing tag team, but this time he wasn't able to walk away unscathed as Otis took him out with a front slam. So there you go. Um, Next match we got was a match between Finn Balor and T-Bar. And I told you, I said, man, if T-Bar, if the company actually paid attention to how over T-Bar is yeah. on social media when it comes to his burns on people, yes. we might actually be able to salvage this guy. They can. not He's got the tools. He's got the height. He's got a good look. He's believable. I'm sure he can cut some pretty goddamn good promos if he's doing that on Twitter for the most part. So, I mean... They believed in Becky on Twitter, and she helped sell herself and, you know, mainly and build up on Twitter, and then they let her talk more, and then this is what you got. I'm not saying he's going to get to that level, but give the guy a chance. Get Break him from this damn gimmick first yeah. off, and let's just redo everything with him. Yeah, but we actually had him getting some of his shit in in this match. He went for a top rope choke slam, but then uh, Coup de Gras, uh, Finn Balor was able to fight it off. Get him down the mat, Coupe de Gras for a pin and a win. So there you go. And Finn I guess Ballard. with Ballard, he needed a win because I guess they've been, you know, he's been eating pins here left and right lately. So he got a win, yeah. but it came at a cost. It came at a cost of Austin Theory then showing up yes. and taking him out and getting a selfie while Finn laid unconscious on the mat. Which you know, Theory's going to be going over in this program if he's spending time with Mr. McMahon. Yeah. So again, Finn. <sighs> Floundering on the main roster after making an impact. She's collecting his merchandising checks at this point, right? Yeah. We get backstage. We got Dana Brooke. She's walking around with her 24-7 title before Reggie saves Dana from being attacked from behind by Tamina, who's (laughs) trying to get at it. Didn't need this three minutes. Yeah, we got a video package for the life and career of Liv Morgan ahead of her match against Becky Lynch. I will give him kudos on this. I did I did buy this, hook, line, and sinker. It was a good pro. You bought it, this it as good. if Liv might get a fluke win and might yes. hand the title back at the next And just the pay-per-view. inspiration of her story, which, again, they why the hell they don't tell these stories right away when you get to know these people instead of, well, here's the big match that led up to this. Why I mean, have we shown her on television already several times crying? Yes. That's why I, I mean, couldn't that, get into that it. I mean, that sucked too, but this this vignette was good. This vignette was really good. I'll, I'll give them that. Well, we got that match. Becky Lynch, the champ versus Liv Morgan. And, well, yeah. I mean, we already knew how this was going to happen. We knew what it was. Liv did a good good job in it, you know, trying to make it believable. She actually was able to hit a rings of Saturn on yes. Becky Lynch in this yes. match. And then Lynch was eventually able to counter into a disarmor. Liv got to the ropes for the break, and then uh, she got an inside cradle in on yep. Becky Lynch, and that was countered for a manhandle slam before Becky was able to pin her. And uh, she well, grabbed the bottom rope. Becky's got the new gimmick of grabbing the rope. Yeah. So, so I'm going to guess that is where we get the pay-per-view match because now we're going to say she cheated to win this one too. Where's Marima? You know, that wasn't fair and all that. So uh, overall, this Raw, you thought as an overall package? Better than it was. 
lot better than it has been. There's some things there that that look promising. Lashley, they're building him up once again. I like that. Um, the title picture, I, I just don't know. I mean, I like Big E, so I, I think he's good there. But some of the other things, I guess the Aries thing, they're starting to get me a little bit with it. I, I just, I hopefully we get some clue what the hell McMahon's doing with him. AEW Dynamite, a show <laughs> oh. that I thought was straight ass. Okay, came at you live from Long Island. Yes, and so same arena Raw ran two weeks ago because they were doing the whole well. They're having trouble selling tickets. So you, the AEW sold it out. I mean, this was the damn arena they were fighting over. Yeah. Well, we started this show off predictably with not predictably though. You didn't think so. My, my Not with is, hitting MJF's music and Punk then walking out. Well, that was a great troll by Punk. Yes. He's used it in the past, obviously. Uh, so I will say predictable in terms of the feud that they were going to highlight first. Well, they are in to. Long Island. And they they had love to. kicking shows off with Punk or Daniels. But it was fantastic the yeah. way he came out because they got them all pumped up. They were all cheering for MJF. And then Punk walked out with that big shit eating grin. This was a homecoming for MJF, by the way. Yes, which it you was. would think MJF yes. would not give a fuck. Based on the way that he yeah. was pandering to the crowd yes. when he did finally come out. Yes. Um, but we'll, we'll get into yeah. that here in a little bit. Anyways, dude, I thought that this segment with CM Punk trying to get the heat, being that they were at MJF's backwoods, I thought that it was very bizarre. Well, it, it kind of it was like it had they its were moments. trying to pull one over the audience. They were trying to be anti WWE in a way that they didn't want to force it. But it's like Punk is the baby face, MJF is the annoying, shitty grin heel. Fuck the crowd for one night. Just do what you do. Well, but it yeah. was him cracking jokes on the Islanders. Yes, and calling the crowd chicken shit. Yeah. And doing all, I, I don't know what, I just thought that it was uh, a little confusing more than anything in in, in, I in liked regards it. to Punk trying to get heat. I liked it, and it brought me back to Austin Hart, Canada, USA. Kind of like that concept. You know going in there, they were just going to boo whoever the hell, and they were going to love MJF. It's the only place in the world where MJF is going to get a pop. So you knew coming in. That's what you're dealing with. Yeah, as I mentioned before, he leaned in and insulted the Islanders and said Chicago cra- is a lot little rowdier than you guys. Yeah. I mean, that was you know that was the thing he was you know plugging away to the old Chicago is a little better than you here in New York. So yeah. I mean, that was and dumb. and you know what they did was they presented you know they ran an MJF video package and if. They filled it with accolades and all of that, and basically they presented him as basically a hero to Long Island, a heel to the rest of the world. Yes. That's how this was pretty much positioned. Yeah. Um, Now, he stayed out there because we got a diamond, diamond battle royale. Yeah. After this segment. He's got to win that ring again. Yes. Now, now the problem, though, with the Long Island thing, I got to bring it back to that, too, just a little bit. There was three guys they were trying to highlight as homecomings from Long Island. Mm-hmm. And I mean, we'll get to, you know, the one in the fucking van coming up. But also the guy in the main event who's feuding with Brian, oh, he's from Long Island too, Silvers. And it's like, no, no one gives a shit. Honest, I'm sorry. You guys could, yeah, you're from here. This is the guy that we should say on the broadcast He's the hometown guy. You could tell by that crowd reaction. Yeah. So when they were trying to sell it on commentary that they had like three other guys with the homecomings, no. There's only one, and There's it was MJF. One. Yeah. yeah, one that matters. Yeah, yeah. Diamond Diamond Battle Royal, they had both MJF and Wartlow in this match, so you knew that they were going to have some sort of issue, if you will, in this yeah. match. And right on cue, MJF eliminated Wartlow and a few others. Jay and Lethal was eliminated by Matt Hardy, I think, within the first minute and a half. Yes, that that was what gonna be the that, hell. That is was wrong going here. to be my next point. That yeah. Jay Lethal, yes. the prized free agent, who lost already in his debut to Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship. Yeah. Ends up being 
not just eliminated by Matt Hayes. He was one of the first to go in this match. One of the first. We're booking him absolute shit. This guy was a world champion at ROH for a long time. Face of the company for so long. Great stuff in TNA, obviously, with him and Flair and other programs as well. Big name. Black Machismo. Black Machismo. (laughs) And and here we are. And they're not even giving the guy a mic. What the I mean, right now with Jay Lethal, they got to do something quick. And when I saw that happening, and I know this was all about MJF anyways, but I didn't even know Lethal was in this thing until I read the results. And I'm like, what? That's who Hardy eliminated? Yeah. We got a a position here in this match where we get absolute Ricky Starks. We got Dante Martin who got pushed hard in this match in MJF. Mm-hmm. Um, we get Starks who attacks Dante Martin. Yes. MJF is outside the ring. Yeah. And he's debating on whether or not he should go and help out Dante Martin. Yes. He's getting pummeled by Starks. Well, this is after Dante officially became one of the finalists because he turned on Starks. Right, and we've got Taz yes. going off and on Taz commentary. Taz going off on this. I'm like, well, aren't Saying you that proud we that a- one of the guys anyways was going to be eliminated? Yeah, yeah. So, so I MJF, mean, he's strange. going back and forth. He's walking up the ramp. He finally decides to go ahead and run back to the ring. Yes. That got an ovation from the crowd. Gets into the ring. He and Starks, they shove one another. Mm-hmm. And then... That's when they swerved the crowd and they both start beating the shit out of Dante Martin. Why not? Because that's who MJF's got to go against next week. And as they're pummeling on Martin, I'm thinking, you know what? Just let the heels get their heat. No, Punk ruins this. He runs back out. The crowd gets lukewarm. As Punk comes in. Well, they were booing Punk because, again, they 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 didn't want to see him. No, they didn't want to see him anymore. We've already seen you. He gets in the ring. We got Dante Martin. Uh, well, MJF rolls out of the ring. He avoids yes. Punk. Now we've yep. got a face-to-face between Ricky Starks, Starks and, and CM Punk. Punk. Yep. Starks is threatening to put Punk to sleep. Doesn't realize Dante Martin is behind him. He gets turned around. Martin nails him. CM Punk hits to go to sleep. And again, the crowd could not have given a shit less no. about no. this. And I heard this was to build up. The Rampage match, which I'm like, oh, God, it's the debut of Hook. I'm actually more excited. Are you really excited about that? I'm like, oh, my God, this is what Taz was getting all excited about. I mean, it only took almost 18 months. When did we first see Hook? I didn't think he was old enough to be in the (laughs) promotion. I, I thought he was, like, still 18. He might be. I don't know. But, yeah, I guess... It's building to help out with that. We next then got a match of Jurassic Express in the Varsity yeah. Blonde. So we, we this come is out. where we started. Yeah. Well, to me, we we started to go down a hill during the Battle Royal because yeah. we had a bunch of people in the ring that I didn't want to see Correct, to begin yeah. with. Yeah. All right. So we end mm-hmm. that segment and then we go True. into the next thing where we've got an eight man <laughs> tag of people for the most part I really didn't want to see. We get Jurassic no. Express. They're coming down with Varsity Blondes and they're taking on the Acclaimed in 2.0. Um, you know, it's always nice to see the Acclaimed for the entrance. It's for Max the rap. That's all though now. And I thought it was yeah. a little weak. I mean, there was a reference in there, Barb about Andrew Cuomo because yep. they're in Long Island. Well, they weren't going to make the Julia Hart mistake again. So Yes. I mean. uh, they went out of their way to really make Luchasaurus be the star of this match. That's how they booked it. Um, so you got Jurassic Express and Varsity Blondes. They defeated the Acclaimed in 2.0 in a match that I really didn't care about. I didn't about. care about this either. Um, then we get into another tag match. And this is the problem. They booked these two, and it was like, oh. We got Chaos. Yes. Rocky Romero and Chuck Taylor rocking an eye patch coming down the aisle with Orange Cassidy taking on the Young Bucks. Yes. Who were accompanied by Brandon Cutler and Adam and Cole. Yes. Who's a manager now? Imagine that. Um, we ripped the other company for saying uh, that, but uh, this was yeah. becoming immediately a goofball show for me, and it continued it, it to worse. go that route. Yeah, I don't care what anyone says. This is just this was just not a good show for me. No, this match, my big issue. Why is Rick Knox? Why is he a referee in this company? Because the young bucks like him. I'm, I'm. That's the only purpose. He's in every one of their matches. They don't use another ref. There was no enforcement of the rules whatsoever in no. this tag match. Not at all. There no. was no like, 
outlaw rules no. type of stipulation this and match. There this were, was a regular tag yeah. team match, and there were no rules being enforced. And there were terrible spots where you saw the guys literally helping each other again, trying to do the spots, doing the backflips and stuff, and it was just like, guys, guys, guys. Well, the big story out of this match that everyone uh, will, will talk about, I guess, the most, if anything came out of this match, was the return of Trent. Now he looked good. I'll give him that. He looked, looks looked looks good. even leaner. He's looked already leaner. Pretty... I wasn't, you know, with the hair shaved yeah. off. I don't know if that was the look to go with. How did he return, sir? What did he roll up in? This is when I turned the fucking thing off. It's Mom Sue in the goddamn minivan. Shine time for Sue in the van, baby. Yes, and this was after the match, so they already lost the match. They had already lost the match. Yes, to a Meltzer driver that looked like absolute shit, and um. Yeah, so they lost the match. Brandon, Brandon Cutler is using that spray that I guess used to uh, hurt opponents, and he's spraying it, but he can spray it on the Young Bucks, and they're just fine. But here, during the beatdown, he's spraying the guys with it. I, I don't know. But, yeah, Trent comes down, run in, gets clears the ring. It's kind of like yeah. the Goombas and the poisonous plants on Mario yeah. Brothers. Yeah, it's like how if the hell? If you touch it, you, you die. Touch it, you if die, the Goombas, we're fine. they're good. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> Guess they need a Yoshi to eat all that shit up. I don't know, but it's it's strange. So we get the reunion of best friends, and we got Chris Statlander who is accompanying Sue, making sure she finds herself <sighs> yes. to the ring and she doesn't fall off the steps like Arn fell off the <laughs> stage. <laughs> and again, it was a good thing Arn wasn't packing some heat. <laughs> Anyways, moving on from this. After oh, you the forgot match. the big circle jerk they did in the ring. Well, I, I'm, I'm trying to forget certain oh elements of this, God. but we got everyone hugging it out and everything. The crowd <sighs> pops. Anyways, I just wasn't into it. Didn't give a shit. We move on to something else I didn't give a shit for. And we got <laughs> Sammy Guevara, who's okay. being interviewed. And then out of nowhere, out walks Cody Rhodes who confirms that he will now be facing Sammy Guevara for the TNT Championship <laughs> oh, during Christmas week. Yeah. He's just going to throw himself in that match? I I know I am so what confused right now with Cody Rhodes. How does he get that now? Because he won the damn match. His wife helped with the burning table. I didn't know Andrade was on that level of being in the title picture after all the losses he's taken. And did we ever get a resolution from the Malachi Black thing? No, no, I'm going to give now you a Malachi Black update and what he was up to uh, in this show. I just know, but bit. it's just like, what the fuck? I mean, Cody Sammy says just... this is a match that he's always been waiting for, a match between he and Cody. So well, that's what you're going to get, Christmas week, oh, a match between those two. God. Um, and then we also got news. We got uh, men, uh, men of the Year interrupting on the mic. Oh, they're back again. Announcing uh, that Dan Lambert will be returning soon. Again, something else I didn't yeah, care about. That doesn't do anything for doesn't me. Doesn't do anything for nope. me. Uh, we get a match, Jamie Hayter versus yeah. Rio. Or Rio. So, <laughs> Rio is going to be next in line to face Britt Baker, mm -hmm. the champ. So, this yeah. match, all this, this match was, was basically just to kind of, it was a tune-up. Yes. Okay. To set up and for we next were going to use Hayter, who eventually I think they're going to split her away from Baker. Yep. Um, this was just a tune-up for Britt to go at it with Riho eventually. It's Britt's Wardlow. I mean, that's the thing yeah. we have here. Um, I will say, with the exception of one spot in this match, I can look at Jamie Hayter and say at least she's shown some improvements here and there in the ring. However, there was one spot in this match that it was like, ouch. <laughs> And there's a sec. We got Hater and Britt on the outside, mm -hmm. and they're waiting patiently for Rio to finally just fucking jump from the top oh, turnbuckle. Oh, yes. She goes to dive and falls short. Hater was supposed <laughs> to catch her and run her into the ring post. Instead, Rio jumps. Hater oh. barely catches her. Rio hits the damn ground, and then Hater picks her up and then runs her into the ring post. Well, yeah, you got to finish the spot. <laughs> <laughs> this match went way too long, dude, for what it was supposed to be. Uh, but Rio And that's got... saying something because the two tag team matches before this went way too long as well. 
Yeah, this match went way too long. Afterwards, Britt Baker was able to attack Riho. They all did, and so there you go. Yes. Uh, a heel actually leaving the scene with, with heat. some heat. Yes. And, and the heel leaving with it and not another one of their counterparts coming in and hitting with a chair and stealing it away. So this is already a silly show coming out of the punk yes. Long Island exchange. Yes. This has become a silly-ass show. It gets a little sillier. I'm sitting there. Why am I seeing the Varsity Blondes again? We've already seen them mm-hmm. earlier in the night, and they 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 won. They they were on yeah, the winning team. That's they right. They were Jurassic the, yeah. Express. Why am I seeing them again? They're not involved in a feud with anyone. Now was this down in the ring? No. Or was this back? Oh, actually, okay, yeah. All three are out there: Pillman, Garrison, Julia Hart. They're being interviewed. They're talking gibberish, and out of nowhere, we get Malachi Black that appears out of the darkness. He stares him down, and, and out, of, out of nowhere, just decides to, of all people, missed in the face Julia Hart. <laughs> that barely touched her, dude. It barely gl- glazed on her face. In scene. There you go. You got to think... I, 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 what does I, Malachi Black? Why does he care about Varsity Blondes? Well, my whole thing with the misting thing is, in the middle of a pandemic, do you think that's a wise spot to keep doing? I just, I, I don't. Yeah, we're spitting at guys, and I know it's wrestling, but it's like we got all this shit going on, and <laughs> that's the main move. We're not featuring the big ass kick anymore that he used to do. Here's, we're doing the misting. Are are we trying to in storyline uh, basically allude that it's not just your regular average great Muda mist? It's COVID infected. That's mist. what I would do with. I is. mean, you may as well if you're rolling with this shit. Hopefully, the AEW roster has gotten their booster shots is yeah that get that trying? booster shit because here comes uh, the s- next variant in your face I mean, i'm sorry i'm trying to find there there's certain elements of this show that although they have become better than raw in most weeks yes. this was a show that was too much of the dumb shit i told you this is like a 2000 wcw show it was you had one good thing and all of a sudden you're watching and you're like what the fuck is Judy Bagwell and a Viagra on a pole match doing here? We get our main event, Brian Danielson versus John Silver. Of course, Danielson won. This was yeah. playing on the hometown thing of the Beat of the Dark Order. <laughs> yeah. John Silver he comes out. These uh Well I I I I feel like they went backwards. If we were gonna sit here throughout the show and again tout of the guys on the roster who were from the area that were going to be on this show. Yeah. By the time we got the John Silver, we give a fuck. We didn't care. No. That's the problem. And I know they tried to sell it in the promo the week before that Brian wants to kick everyone's ass in their hometown, but it's just like, and they're going to Texas next week, and Hangman's not from Texas. He was already from Virginia. So, I yes. mean, we're doing this hometown beatdown shit like backwards, like you said. Yeah. Danielson, because of the fact they were in Silver's backyard, he did sell. Mm-hmm. Thought he sold a little bit too much. Probably for silver, way too much. Yeah. You know, they probably looked at the amount of time and Danielson said we could stretch it. All the selling in the world that Danielson was doing, though, for John Silver was not going to convince this crowd no. one bit. And you go back and listen to it. They knew damn well John Silver yeah, didn't have a win. chance in hell no. of winning this match. No. So, um, and that, yeah. Well, I was just going to say the other theme of this is that Danielson's been winning with various submission yes. moves. Yes. Yeah. So even Excalibur, who's always got a name for something, even he struggled to come up with a name for <laughs> this submission move that Danielson <laughs> used to win this match. My, my thing with AEW and some of these matches is they think they got to have it always competitive. No. No, he could have stretched. He could have stretched the hell out of them for 15 minutes, and it could have been a real dominant victory. And and that's the other thing too. It's the time frame. But you can have a guy be dominant in the match. You don't have job guys, or you you do have job guys, but you try to sell them as big stars sometimes. And I think that's the problem they're getting in right now with the company. Instead of developing some of these younger talents up and coming like you used to do by getting the wins over job guys, we think everyone's a superstar on the roster, and I'm sorry to say they're just not. Um, again, overall, I thought this show was ass. I didn't think it was a very good yeah. show coming yeah, out of rough. the opening segment from the Battle Royal. 
on. I just thought it got goofier and goofier with people that I didn't need to really see on this show, people that I didn't think really had a place on this show. I don't yeah. know what the status was of the roster, but just um I don't it, it just reminded me of the first several months of AEW yes. as opposed to the current AEW yeah. and which talent wise they're a lot better they're in a better place than what they were a year ago around this time. So yeah. I thought it was a five at most. I just didn't think this yeah. was a good show. Out of a ten, I, yeah, I gave it a five. You, that, you're being pretty generous because, yeah, like I said, when I saw that van come on, I was like, I'm done with this shit. All right, that is your Raw and AEW Dynamite review for the week. We are going to try our best to come at you with some news and tidbits because there are a few stories that popped out over the last uh, few days. We're going to try to get that out to you, but this is your Raw and Dynamite review. Again, be sure to listen and subscribe to us wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts and social media. Follow us. We'll follow you back. Bush League MS Pod. We'll talk to you later.